This is it, the big finale of the 2013 World Championships here in France. The elite men's race, already two laps in out of ten on the final circuits. But we caught up with a few of the riders this morning before the start under the rainy skies to find out what they thought would happen and how they were going to deal with the rain on today's race. I don't mind this that much. It's not cold. We had rain all year, so we, we had a sunny tour de France, so this kind of, it was due, you know, a nice seven hours in the rain. It'll, it'll have a big effect. I mean, anybody who doesn't, isn't comfortable on their bike in the wet is, is, is going to struggle, you know, and I think guys like Nibali and Sagan and Quintana, who are really comfortable going very fast downhill in the rain, will kind of exploit their strengths in that. We definitely had the best preparation we've ever had as the Irish team. It's been super professional and... Like they've got the chef here all week and it's been perfect, so uh, yeah, I just hope to stay safe. Yeah, 270k is a long way in the rain. It's a long way anyway, but long way in the rain it's going to be really bad. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's going to separate the men from the boys, definitely. Such a long race and such a hard course. We've all been told, you know, what we've got to do. And uh, I think we've got a team for it. With people like Nibbly and stuff like that here, he loves the rain, <laughs> so it's going to be difficult. From your points of view, is it just for Froome or is there kind of a backup plan? No, it's all for Froome, yeah. Confidence on your side must be quite high after your win over in Canada. Yeah, uh, it was a good uh, good sign. I mean, form is good, legs are good, so looking forward to today, of course. Don't really like the weather, but uh, that's, uh, it's the same for everybody, so we'll see. The 273-kilometre elite men's race started under torrential rain in the town of Lucca. Defending world champion Philippe Gilbert of Belgium led the peloton out in front of the many fans who'd braved the weather. After a flurry of attacks from the start of the race proper, it wasn't long before a group of five formed at the front over one of the early climbs. The gap to the leaders extended to over eight minutes before Team GB began working on the front for Chris Froome, with Mark Cavendish particularly prominent towards the head of affairs. With the rain showing no signs of abating, a drenched peloton was led over the finish line for the first time by Cavendish, with the other nations happy to sit back and wait. With four laps completed, the front group was down to just two riders, Barta of the Czech Republic and Hutzarski of Poland, both of whom ride for Team NetApp Endura the rest of the year. Behind, Italy had been setting at a furious pace and that, along with several crashes, whittled the group down before Giovanni Visconti launched an attack in pursuit of the leaders. The last remaining rider from the breakaway was Hutzarski, but he wasn't alone long before Visconti caught him on the climb to Fiesoli. Belgium and then Colombia leapt into action behind and before long, everything was finally together at the front ready for the final showdown. It was at this point, with just one lap remaining, that Spain showed themselves at the front for the very first time, setting up Joachim Rodriguez for an attack on the penultimate climb of the day. He was joined by Nibali, who had had to chase back on after an earlier crash. However, that crash cost Nibali in more ways than one. He had lost confidence on the descent, and it was there that he lost Rodriguez, whilst Valverde and the Portuguese rider Rui Costa bridged up to the Italian. With 1k to go, it looked like Rodriguez had it in the bag, but a late charge by Rui Costa saw him first catch, and then out-sprint the Spaniard to become the first ever Portuguese world champion. Valverde rounded out the podium with a disappointed Nibali coming home fourth in front of some very disappointed home fans. That felt like three, four races in a row. It's, yeah, seven hours in the rain and uh, yeah, for me I'm really bad in rain so I have to wear like a lot of clothes and now I cramped everywhere because, yeah. I felt horrible, Dan. I, uh, <laughs> enough guys fell down that all of a sudden you found yourself in the top 50 just by being there and then, uh, you know, I figured as the American team and we, don't, we can't just fizzle out because we, you know, Chris and TJ and Taylor and Matt, I mean, everyone crashed. So it was just me and Alex Howes and, you know, we figured well, I'll go out blazing and I, I went with four to go to try to do something get in the race and make the race and uh, it didn't work out. It's really hard race, you know, you have to stay focused all the time to, to, to just stay on your bike and then uh, it's also a hard, uh, hard, hard circuit and uh, well, yeah, I think everybody's really empty now after this one. Well, seven and a half hours in the saddle. Daniel Free, the cycling journalist earlier, used the word epic in a tweet. And I think you can safely say it was that horrendous weather the whole way through. Rui Costa of Portugal eventually triumphing over the two big teams of the race, Spain and Italy. I think plenty of questions for those teams and journalists and managers alike over the next few days as to how they lost this gold medal. Anyway, that wraps up our coverage here at the World Championships. We hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be back again soon, so stay tuned to GCN before veering right on the outskirts of Pistoia and picking up the same route as the women's event. 
at 7.3 kilometres, the teams crest the only rise on the course at Cerro Valle Pistoise, 